What I learned in Montreal. Man, How's it hanging? This is Jacob, a former Canadian with a penchant for skateboarding and acting like a chicken. He lived in Montreal for a cumulative 15 years, and I picked him up in Brooklyn to help me produce a great Canadian slash American road trip. Made it to Canada! I learned that a great way to mix up your breakfast routine is to take the breakfast challenge. This is the breakfast challenge? This is the breakfast challenge. Basically, all you do is order for the other person, and they have to eat whatever you order. Can I get some coffee? Yes. Yeah, he'll have some coffee. He'll have some coffee. It's a pretty okay. entertaining thing to do, but you will confuse your server. Our loft was sick. We stayed along Saint Laurent, which is pretty much where the action is. This is what I think Jacob looks like when he's producing. This is what Jacob actually looks like when he's producing. Montreal is a city that embraces public street art. Our neighborhood had the highest concentration of large-scale murals that I've ever seen. Many of them have been made possible thanks to Sterling Downey. A Montreal native, he's co-founded an art magazine, an international graffiti festival, and most recently become a city councilman of the borough of Verdun, which must have been quite a journey considering that back in the day, he was arrested for graffiti. What I've learned in my new role is everything moves slowly in politics. If you want to make things move fast, be an activist. One of the most well-known and interesting aspects of Montreal, and the entire province of Quebec for that matter, is the fact that the official language is French. A whopping 78% of people from Quebec identify French as their primary language. This is Rob. Yeah, yeah, you got a Porsche, I got a gold mic, man. <laughs> He's a DJ in Montreal, and most recently has taken on the role of barber. One thing that I've learned in Montreal is that language politics here exceed racial politics. <laughs> this is Malen. As an actress, she's lived and worked all over Canada, but grew up in Montreal and lives here now. Her current occupation consists of pretending to be a cop on a popular Canadian cop drama called 192. Just can't seem to figure out where they get the name from. Milen brought us to a place called La Via Velo that has rather formidable Benedicts. And then we headed to an enormous farmer's market, but didn't eat anything because we were still full from the Benny. At the base of Mont Royal is a regularly scheduled spontaneous event called Tam Tams. A huge variety of characters come out of the woodwork and form a massive drum circle that goes for hours on end. But that's not all that happens in the park. LARP. Live action role play. In the flesh. Uh, I learned that I made a lot of new friends playing this game. how to play as a group. LARP. I learned how to have fun. LARP. After a wonderful time with Milan, we wrap things up the only sensible way by having a glass of wine. What I learned from what I learned, the best way to experience any new place that you don't know is to be the most open-minded, adventurous, and curious, and friendly person in the world. <laughs> This is Desmond, Jacob's 20-year-old son. I like to call him Desmond. Desmond. Tell me where to go. Straight. I can do that. He took us to the chalet barbecue, because that's where you go when you want chicken and fries. He's a chip off the old block. Montreal's proud of their bagels. The best bagels are in the Jewish neighborhood, and that's probably not a shocker. Buy bagels, find tzatziki, that's Greek, and then you rip and dip. Rip and dip. Another amazing culinary staple of Montreal is a smoked meat sandwich. It's basically a giant pile of smoked meat on teeny tiny slices of white bread. And honestly, that's all you need. I think the bread is more of a decoy so that you can tell yourself that you're not the sort of person who just eats a giant pile of meat. And don't even get me started on poutine, the most incredible thing ever. You can't go wrong with french fries, gravy, and cheese curds. Know where you can find cheese curds? A gas station. How do you know if they're good? The squeak test. If when you chomp down on the soft, tender cheese curd, you hear a squeak, then you know it's good. Mm, I think I heard a squeak. Dude, this is rubbery. I learned that one of Montreal's most recognizable structures is the Big O. This bad boy was made in the 70s to host the 76 Summer Olympics. It's not used for much these days, but it does have an odd half pipe right behind it. A convenience store is called a Dep, and a lot of people bite. They've got a little baby Chinatown, and Rolos don't come in rolls. 
On the edge of town is this wacky structure called Habitat 67, which is one of 90 pavilions built for the World Expo in 1967. People live there now, and just behind that is something rather unexpected happening in the river. Aujourd'hui, j'ai appris que on pouvait faire du surf à Montréal. Montreal is an amazing cosmopolitan city. I learned that whether you're shredding the gnar or hanging out in a trailer, Montreal's abundance of food and art will give you as much as you can handle. And there's a ton of strip clubs. Totally forgot to mention the strip clubs. Goodbye.